One of NASA's most successful and enduring missions is the Voyager mission. For many years, the Voyager missions have acted as a portal to the marvels of the universe, providing priceless data to Earth. However, Voyager 1 unexpectedly shut down, before unexpectedly coming back online, only to transmit a very terrifying signal back to Earth. What has Voyager 1 discovered, and why are researchers terrified? Join us as we unravel NASA's warning of Voyager 1's impossible discovery before shutting down. Gary Flandro Grand Tour Concept When we talk about one of NASA's most successful missions, there's a name you might not hear often. Gary Flandro. Flandro, an aerospace engineer, played a crucial role in shaping the journey of the Voyager 1 spacecraft. His brilliant ideas and calculations were key to the triumph of the Voyager missions, which have now etched their names in the history of space exploration. Back in the mid-1960s, while at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, Flandro stumbled upon something extraordinary. He spotted a rare alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, set to occur in the late 1970s and early 1980s. This alignment, occurring roughly once every 175 years, opened up a fantastic opportunity. Flandro envisioned using gravitational assists, a concept where a spacecraft gains speed by swinging past planets, thus conserving both time and fuel. Gravitational assists work like a slingshot in space. As the spacecraft approaches a planet, it falls into its gravitational pull, speeding up as it moves away. By carefully plotting this bearing, engineers can send spacecraft on long journeys with minimal fuel consumption. Recognizing the potential of this planetary alignment, Flandro proposed an ambitious plan, a grand tour mission. This mission would send a spacecraft on a remarkable journey through the solar system, using gravitational assists to visit all four outer planets. The bearing he envisioned would allow the spacecraft to fly by each planet in succession, collecting data and sending it back to Earth. Flandro's proposal was innovative. Not only would it provide new insights into the outer planets, but it would do so in a fraction of the time compared to targeting each planet individually. Plus, the fuel savings from using gravitational assists meant that the mission could be accomplished with the technology available at the time. However, there were significant challenges. Plotting a voyage to take advantage of gravitational assists from multiple planets required precise calculations and timing. Any error could lead to mission failure. Moreover, the vast distances involved posed communication and data transmission challenges. The spacecraft needed advanced instruments capable of functioning in deep space and transmitting data across billions of miles. Despite these obstacles, Flandro's proposal sparked enthusiasm at NASA. The scientific rewards of the Grand Tour were too enticing to ignore. Yet, due to budget constraints and technical hurdles, the mission was scaled back. Instead of one spacecraft visiting all four planets, two Voyager probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, were launched. The launch of Voyager 1 on September 5, 1977, marked a historic moment in human history and space exploration. It initiated an epic journey that would take the spacecraft to the outer planets and beyond, unraveling new wonders and mysteries of the solar system and interstellar space. The Voyager program, inspired by Flandro's vision, capitalized on the rare planetary alignment, utilizing gravitational assists to embark on a grand tour of discovery. While the concept of gravitational assists wasn't new, the Voyager missions were the first to use this technique to visit multiple planets in succession, creating a grand tour of the outer solar system, journeying beyond the stars. The Voyager spacecraft came to life under the careful hands of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL in California. They were crafted based on the Mariner spacecraft blueprint, but with smart tweaks and upgrades. Packed with 11 fancy scientific gadgets, these spacecraft were on a mission to uncover the secrets of planets, moons, rings, magnetic fields, atmospheres, and radiation in our cosmic neighborhood. But that's not all. Tucked away inside these space probes was a special surprise, a golden record filled with Earth's sounds and images. It was like a cosmic message in a bottle, just in case any aliens happened to stumble upon it. The big day arrived for Voyager 1's launch at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. However, there was a hiccup. 
A technical glitch with the rocket's guidance system delayed liftoff by a nerve-wracking two weeks. Finally, on September 5th, 1977, Voyager 1 soared into the sky aboard a Titan 3E Centaur rocket, leaving Earth behind. Voyager 1 needed speed. It followed a shorter, swifter path compared to its twin, Voyager 2, which had launched a fortnight earlier. By November 1977, Voyager 1 had breezed through the asteroid belt without breaking a sweat. Then came the big moment. April 1978, when Voyager 1 began its close-up look at Jupiter from a whopping 165 million miles away. On March 5, 1979, it pulled off its closest pass, just about 217,000 miles from Jupiter's swirling clouds. This made Voyager 1 the second-ever spacecraft to swing by Jupiter, but it was the real trailblazer, revealing Jupiter's hidden treasures. During its flyby, Voyager 1 stumbled upon some terrifying discoveries. It found a sneaky thin ring around Jupiter that Earth's telescopes had missed, made up of dusty leftovers from the planet's inner moons getting battered by meteoroids. This ring, less than 19 miles thick, hung about 50,000 miles from Jupiter's heart. Plus, Voyager 1 spotted two fresh-faced moons dancing within this ring, Thebe and Metis, both small and oddly shaped, adding to the celestial spectacle. Jupiter's fiery moon unveiled by Voyager 1. Another remarkable discovery made by Voyager 1 was the fiery activity on Io, one of Jupiter's moons. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, boasts an impressive collection of moons, totaling 79 known satellites so far. Some of these moons orbit closely to the gas giant, found within its magnificent rings. However, the most prominent among Jupiter's moons are the four mighty Galilean moons, named after the famed astronomer Galileo, who first observed them in 1610. A journey through space would take you towards Jupiter, passing by its glittering rings and arriving at the quartet of Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. These moons stand out as celestial giants, each with its unique characteristics and mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Io, the innermost of the Galilean moons, dances in a tight embrace with Jupiter, a mere 350,000 kilometers above the swirling clouds of the gas giant. To an observer standing on Io's surface, Jupiter would dominate the sky, appearing an astonishing 39 times larger than our moon. But Io's proximity to its colossal parent comes at a cost. Its orbit is a weird dance, completing a revolution around Jupiter in a mere 42.5 hours, a stark contrast to the monthly orbit of Earth's moon. What makes Io's orbit even more fascinating is its synchronization with its neighboring moons, a phenomenon known as orbital resonance. For every orbit of Europa, Io completes two, and for every orbit of Ganymede, it completes four. This gravitational interplay enhances Io's strange orbit, subjecting it to intense tidal forces that serve as a primary driver for its dramatic geological activity. When Voyager 1 zoomed past Io, getting as close as a mere 2,000 kilometers away, it captured stunning images of Io's surface. What it revealed was nothing short of extraordinary, a landscape bursting with vivid colors and lacking any crater marks. Among its findings were towering mountains rivaling Everest in height, vast volcanic pits stretching hundreds of kilometers wide, and extensive lava flowing across the terrain. One of the most striking discoveries was the presence of plumes erupting from Io's surface. This groundbreaking observation provided concrete evidence of Io's volcanic activity, making it the first and only place apart from Earth where such activity has been visibly observed. Moreover, Voyager 1 confirmed that Io's surface is coated with various sulfur frosts, lending it a mesmerizing array of hues. One of the most remarkable features observed on Io is the absence of typical volcanic calderas. Instead, large lava lakes, surrounded by steep walls, serve as the primary sources of volcanic activity. Among these is Loki, the largest volcanic depression on Io, spanning 200 kilometers in diameter. These lava lakes, often covered by a thin crust, are directly linked to subsurface lava reservoirs. Loki, in particular, is a dynamic entity, contributing significantly to Io's heat output. While it typically produces a quarter of the planet's heat, occasionally, the crust on its lava lake collapses, 
resulting in a tenfold increase in heat production. Such phenomena highlight the dynamic and fascinating nature of I.O., a world shaped by the powerful forces of volcanic activity amidst the vastness of space, unveiling mysteries of the gas giants. Voyager 1 also encountered Jupiter's intense radiation belts, a result of the planet's strong magnetic field interacting with solar winds. These belts are filled with energetic particles that can pose a danger to spacecraft and future missions. Furthermore, Voyager 1 detected lightning and auroras in Jupiter's atmosphere, along with radio emissions that change with the planet's rotation. These emissions are caused by electrons swirling along magnetic field lines and interacting with plasma in Jupiter's magnetosphere. It discovered that Europa has a smooth, icy surface, hinting at a geologically young interior possibly containing a hidden ocean of liquid water. Ganymede was found to possess its own magnetic field located within Jupiter's magnetosphere. Callisto's heavily cratered surface suggests it has been relatively dormant geologically. Lastly, Amalthea appeared long and reddish, likely due to sulfur from Io. After departing from Jupiter, Voyager 1 set its course for Saturn, its next cosmic destination. It reached Saturn's vicinity on November 12, 1980, gliding past the planet at a distance of approximately 77,000 miles, or 124,000 kilometers. During its journey, Voyager 1 also swung by Saturn's largest moon, Titan, coming as close as about 430 miles or 6,490 kilometers. This close encounter marked the inaugural examination of Titan's dense atmosphere by a spacecraft. While Pioneer 11 had previously visited Saturn, Voyager 1 was the pioneer in unraveling many of the planet's mysteries. Zooming past Saturn at a distance of about 77,000 miles from the top of its clouds, Voyager 1 made numerous discoveries and observations. These findings reshaped our comprehension of Saturn and its collection of moons. Among the most captivating revelations was the existence of a previously unknown ring encircling Saturn, named the G-Ring. This ring, invisible from Earth, consists of tiny particles likely expelled from Saturn's inner moons due to collisions with meteoroids. The G-Ring is exceptionally faint and narrow, spanning approximately 4,700 miles or 7,500 kilometers in width with its inner edge situated around 104,000 miles, or 167,000 kilometers from Saturn's center. Additionally, Voyager 1's keen eye detected five newfound moons dancing within or near Saturn's rings, Prometheus, Pandora, Atlas, Epimetheus, and Janus. These celestial companions added to the richness of Saturn's collection, further enriching our understanding of the planet's complex system. These moons are quite small and come in irregular shapes, ranging from about 40 miles or 64 kilometers to 90 miles or 144 kilometers in diameter. They're sometimes called shepherd moons because they play a crucial role in keeping Saturn's rings in shape and stable through their gravitational pull. One of the significant discoveries made by Voyager 1 was about the complex nature and movement of Saturn's rings. These rings are made up of countless icy and rocky bits, ranging from specks to large boulders. Instead of being smooth and uniform, Voyager 1 found that the rings have gaps, ripples, twisted sections, and bends. These formations occur due to the interactions between the ring particles and Saturn's moons. For instance, Voyager 1 noticed a gap in the A-ring, caused by the gravitational dance with the moon Mimas. It also saw a wavy pattern in the B-ring, influenced by the gravitational tug from the moon Janus. Additionally, there were strange spokes in the B-ring, temporary streaks possibly caused by electrically charged particles in Saturn's atmosphere. Moreover, Voyager 1 took measurements of Saturn's magnetic field and its magnetosphere, the region of space influenced by the planet's magnetic field. This magnetic field, similar to Earth's but stronger and tilted, is generated by Saturn's rotation, and its interaction with the solar wind. The magnetosphere of Saturn stretches far beyond its rings, forming a vast protective bubble around the planet. In its exploration of Saturn's realm, Voyager 1 encountered rich celestial phenomena. It detected plasma particles originating from Saturn's atmosphere, rings and moons, along with auroras and radio emissions. Additionally, 
Voyager 1 observed various moons of Saturn, such as Titan, Enceladus, Mimas, and others. Among its discoveries, Voyager 1 found that Titan boasts a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and methane, making it unique among solar system moons. Enceladus displayed a smooth, bright surface with few craters, hinting at geological activity and a possible subsurface ocean. Mimas revealed a colossal crater named Herschel, covering a third of its diameter. And Iapetus exhibited a striking contrast between its dark and bright hemispheres. On February 17, 1998, Voyager 1 surpassed NASA's Pioneer 10 as the most distant human-made object from Earth. By August 16, 2006, it reached 100 astronomical units from the Sun, marking a significant milestone. Crossing into interstellar space, Voyager 1 made history as the first human-made object to do so. Despite its immense distance and age, Voyager 1 continues to communicate with Earth through the Deep Space Network. The Deep Space Network's Journey of Exploration The Deep Space Network, also known as the DSN, is not just a messenger, it's a scientific powerhouse. Based at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the DSN operates radio antennas located at three sites worldwide, one in Australia, one in Spain, and one in California. These sites are strategically positioned at nearly equal distances from each other to ensure continuous communication with spacecraft, even as Earth rotates. The pioneer of the DSN emerged in 1958, when JPL set up portable radio tracking stations in California, Nigeria, and Singapore to guide Explorer 1, America's first artificial satellite, on its historic journey around Earth. The official establishment of the DSN occurred in December 1963, with subsequent construction and upgrades to its radio antennas over the years. Throughout its existence, the DSN has played crucial roles in space exploration, guiding satellites into orbit around other planets, landing spacecraft on asteroids, and broadcasting iconic moments such as Neil Armstrong's historic moonwalk. To communicate with spacecraft, the DSN utilizes three groups of antennas of varying sizes. The largest antennas, measuring 70 meters across, are essential for communicating with distant objects like Voyager 1, which has ventured beyond the outer reaches of our solar system. These colossal dishes compensate for the incredibly weak signals sent by spacecraft, which weaken significantly over vast distances. The precision of these antennas is remarkable. They must be shaped flawlessly, accurate to within a single centimeter, to ensure optimal signal reception. Additionally, each site features antennas of 34 meters and 26 meters in diameter, used for tracking both distant and Earth-orbiting spacecraft. Despite their refinement, the DSN antennas face a challenge, amplifying faint signals while minimizing background noise, including radio static emitted by celestial objects throughout the universe. Astronomers use clever methods to decode signals, separating satellite transmissions from background noise. Additionally, they must contend with equipment-generated noise, particularly infrared radiation or heat. To combat this, amplifiers are cooled to extremely low temperatures, just a few degrees above absolute zero, to prevent heat interference with sensors. The DSN employs an effective technique called arraying, utilizing multiple antennas to capture signals from the same source. This method is especially useful for radio waves, which have long wavelengths and are less prone to atmospheric interference. Combining these approaches enables the DSN to locate and track spacecraft, even those that have ceased transmitting signals, similar to a massive radar system. Remarkably, it successfully pinpointed India's Chandrayaan-1, currently orbiting the Moon. Yet, the DSN's capabilities extend beyond spacecraft tracking and communication. It also contributes to scientific research. Working with various spacecraft missions, it aids in gathering valuable data for scientific exploration. The DSN isn't just a messenger, it's also a detective. It can uncover secrets hidden in the signals it receives. During the Cassini mission, the DSN played a crucial role in uncovering an innovative discovery the existence of a hidden ocean beneath Enceladus's icy surface. As Cassini whizzed past Enceladus, its speed fluctuated due to variations in gravitational pull caused by different materials beneath the Moon's surface. These changes affected the frequency of Cassini's transmissions, which the DSN detected. 
By analyzing these frequency shifts, astronomers deduced the presence of an underground ocean. But that's not all. The DSN also delved into the mysteries of Saturn's rings alongside Cassini. In 2005, Cassini executed its first radio occultation observations, sending signals from behind the rings back to Earth. As these signals traveled through the rings, their strength varied depending on the density of the ring particles. By employing three different radio frequencies at the same time, each affected differently by particle sizes, astronomers obtained detailed profiles of the ring's density and composition. However, the DSN isn't limited to playing sidekick. Using a technique called radar astronomy, it can directly image objects like asteroids by bouncing signals off them. In a fascinating demonstration of Einstein's theory of general relativity, the DSN sent radio signals to the Viking spacecraft while Mars and Earth were on opposite sides of the Sun. This experiment revealed gravitational time dilation, showing that light bends around massive objects, causing delays in its journey. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the heart of NASA's control center, a sense of urgency filled the air as scientists and engineers gathered around the monitors displaying data from Voyager 1. Whispers of excitement and anticipation filled the room as they awaited the latest transmission from the spacecraft hurtling through the cosmos. Suddenly, the screens flickered to life, and a wave of surprise washed over the room. Voyager 1 had made a discovery that defied all known laws of physics. It had entered a realm where the fabric of space-time seemed to warp and twist in ways that were deemed impossible. The team of scientists exchanged shocked looks, struggling to comprehend the implications of Voyager 1's discovery. But before they could delve deeper into the mystery, a message flashed on the main screen. NASA warns that Voyager 1 has made an impossible discovery before shutting down. Confusion and frustration rippled through the room as the scientists struggled with the sudden order to shut down communication with the spacecraft. Questions hung in the air, unanswered and unresolved. Dr. Emily Hayes, the lead scientist on the Voyager 1 mission, stepped forward, her voice steady despite the turmoil swirling around her. We must comply with NASA's orders, she declared, but we cannot ignore this discovery. We must continue to seek answers, even if it means defying protocol. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the mystery of Voyager 1's revelation remained unsolved. Yet the memory of that fateful day lingered, fueling the team's determination to uncover the secrets of the universe. Communication challenges and interstellar exploration the communication between Voyager 1 and Earth isn't instant. It takes time depending on how far apart they are. Radio signals which travel at the speed of light need about 21 hours to travel from Voyager 1 to Earth, or vice versa, because Voyager 1 is so far away. So when NASA sends a command to Voyager 1, it has to wait for 21 hours to get confirmation that the command was carried out. Similarly, when Voyager 1 sends data or images to Earth, it takes 21 hours for NASA to receive them. This communication isn't continuous. It depends on many factors like power availability, data rate, antenna accuracy, and interference from other sources. Voyager 1 has limited power generated by its radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, which weaken over time. Therefore, it has to decide which instruments and systems to use at any given time. Also, as Voyager 1 moves farther from Earth, its data rate decreases because the signal strength decreases with distance. Any slight deviation from the optimal antenna direction can cause signal loss. Despite these challenges, Voyager 1 continues to send valuable information and pictures back to Earth using its radio communication system and the DSN. It also keeps receiving commands and updates from Earth to ensure it's working correctly. This communication between Voyager 1 and Earth is an incredible feat of human ingenuity and curiosity. It also shows the enduring partnership between Voyager 1 and NASA, which has lasted for more than four decades. But what's happening to Voyager 1 in interstellar space? Interstellar space is the region between stars and a galaxy. It's not empty but filled with various forms of matter and energy like gas, dust, cosmic rays, neutrinos, photons, and dark matter. Interstellar space is almost like a perfect vacuum because its components are very spread out and scarce. 
One way to mark the edge of interstellar space is by looking at how the sun and other stars affect their surroundings. The sun sends out a continuous flow of charged particles and magnetic fields known as the solar wind. This creates a massive bubble around our solar system called the heliosphere. The term heliosphere comes from the Greek word helios, which means the sun. The formation of the heliosphere, the sun's protective bubble, isn't quick. It takes over a thousand years to develop. The idea of the heliosphere began to take shape around 1955, thanks to physicist Leverett Davis. Early on, scientists linked the existence of cosmic rays to the heliosphere. In 1955, what we now call the solar wind was referred to as solar corpuscular radiation. It was recognized as a key part of the heliosphere. In simpler terms, it was proposed that solar corpuscular radiation creates a bubble that expands over time encircling our solar system. This expanding bubble is what we call the heliosphere. There are conditions under which this process might not occur, such as if there's pressure from the interstellar medium, the stuff between the stars. NASA explains the heliosphere's formation as a result of the magnetic field created by the solar wind. According to NASA, after the sun releases the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles, it travels beyond all eight planets reaching about three times the distance to Pluto. Eventually, it encounters the interstellar medium, resulting in what's known as the termination shock. Heliospheric research has been ongoing for several decades, with researchers, physicists, and scientific organizations striving to uncover the exact structure of the solar system's heliosphere. Interestingly, the heliosphere isn't a perfect sphere. Its shape and size are constantly changing due to the dynamic nature of both the solar wind and the interstellar medium. The heliosphere's shape and size depend on three main factors. The overall movement of the heliosphere and the sun, the solar wind, and the interstellar medium. The latter two are particularly fluid, a historic milestone and enduring legacy. Voyager 1 had a big mission, to journey into interstellar space and learn all about it. But figuring out when it crossed the heliopause, the boundary between our solar system and interstellar space, wasn't a piece of cake. There were no clear signs or signals to tell it, hey, you're in interstellar space now. So Voyager 1 had to rely on its trusty instruments to give it some clues. It measured lots of things like how crowded the space was with plasma, the strength and direction of magnetic fields, how intense cosmic rays were, and even picked up on plasma waves. The first hint that Voyager 1 was getting close to interstellar space came in May 2012. It noticed a sudden spike in cosmic rays, those super-fast particles zooming around from outside our solar system. This spike suggested that Voyager 1 was leaving behind the cozy protection of the heliosphere and venturing into a place where cosmic rays were much more common. It was like stepping into a whole new frontier of space. In June 2012, Voyager 1 stumbled upon another clue it noticed a drop in the number of particles from the solar wind. This hinted that Voyager 1 was moving away from where these particles were coming from, the sun. But this clue alone wasn't enough to say for sure that it had reached interstellar space. There could be other reasons for the change in solar wind, after all. The final piece of the puzzle came in August 2012. Voyager 1 detected a huge shift in plasma density and the direction of magnetic fields, Plasma is a gas made of charged particles that can create magnetic fields and carry electric currents. Voyager 1 used its special instrument, the Plasma Wave Instrument, PWS, to measure the density of plasma. This instrument picks up vibrations in plasma caused by different events in space. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1's readings showed a sharp rise in plasma density, from about 0.002 particles per cubic centimeter to around 0.08 particles per cubic centimeter. This spike meant that Voyager 1 had entered a region where plasma was much denser than it was inside the heliosphere, confirming its journey into interstellar space. It was like sailing from a calm river into a turbulent sea of space. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 continued its exploration by examining the strength and direction of magnetic fields using its trusty magnetometer, also known as MAG. This instrument can sense changes in magnetic fields caused by electric currents or moving charges. During this investigation, 
Voyager 1 detected a shift in the direction of the magnetic field by approximately 20 degrees. This change indicated that Voyager 1 had entered a region where the magnetic fields were aligned differently compared to those within the heliosphere. These magnetic field measurements and earlier findings about plasma density provided solid evidence that Voyager 1 had ventured into interstellar space, marking a historic milestone in space exploration. However, confirming this discovery wasn't immediate. Because of Voyager 1's great distance from Earth, it took some time for its signals to reach us. Furthermore, it took several months for scientists to carefully analyze and validate Voyager 1's data before announcing it to the public in September 2013. This process ensured that the discovery was accurate and well-supported by evidence, emphasizing the importance of thorough scientific investigation in space exploration. However, communication with Voyager 1 won't last indefinitely. The reason is that Voyager 1's fuel isn't unlimited. Eventually, it will use up all its power and drift through the galaxy. According to NASA, Voyager 1's power will likely be sufficient to operate one instrument until 2025. After that, it must shut down its radio transmitter and remain silent forever. But even after going silent, Voyager 1 will keep journeying into interstellar space. It carries a golden record filled with sounds and images from Earth, serving as a message to any potential extraterrestrial beings it might encounter. It will also serve as a symbol of human curiosity, creativity, and ingenuity that will endure for eternity. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.